After a long wait, the Boston Bruins finally began their season on Saturday with a win over the Dallas Stars. Brad Marchand, Jake DeBrusque, and Jeremy Swayman were key in the victory. And we're going to break it all down here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins and also chat a little bit about Jimmy Hayes and the details surrounding his death. Let's get into the October 18th episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, shall we? You're Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans? It's a Monday morning, and I am your host, Ian McLaren, uh, here to discuss all things black and gold, as well as take a look around the NHL. Uh, Thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, as well as on YouTube. So please hit that subscribe button. And each new episode will be automatically added to your feed for you to listen and enjoy. Uh, If you could also uh, rate and review, especially if you're an Apple user, that would be very much appreciated. If you are on social media, you can find the podcast at uh, Locked NHL Bruins. That's on both Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at uh, Ian C. McLaren. I had a wonderful weekend in Ottawa with my family. Um, Myself and my three sons went down to visit my parents, my sister and her family. And uh, I was able to uh, get Leafs sends off the TV and enjoy the Bruins season opener against the Dallas Stars uh, from the comfort of my parents' home. Uh, While my dad actually watched on his iPad the uh, the Hawking and Canada game, and I had the uh, Bruins game on the TV. And let's break down what exactly took place that night. The Bruins, of course, had a very long break between their final preseason game and the start of the regular season. They are one of four teams, I believe, to begin their season on Saturday. Uh, Ten whole days, some practices, but... There's only so much you can do in practice to get ready for game situations. And once they took to the ice for real, uh, they did not disappoint. Uh, Full capacity crowd at TD Garden. I know many of you were there, and I'm sure uh, it was quite the the scene there. I know just watching from home and seeing Patrice Bergeron skate under the ice uh, last during the introductions, that was, you know, quite a moment. And, uh, I was so happy that the Bruins are back on the ice. And once the puck dropped, uh, you know, Brad Marchand got it going with a penalty shot goal in the first period. Uh, He said that, uh, you know, he didn't hear the whistle at first, kind of just kept going, tried to get inside on Ryan Suter. And luckily, they called the penalty shot. Uh, He ripped a wrister past Braden Holtby blocker side to become only the third player in NHL history to record his team's first goal of the season on a penalty shot. The Bruins become only the, uh, sorry, the first team in NHL history to have two players accomplish that feat, as Chris Kelly was one of the other two to do so back in October of 2013 against the Tampa Bay Lightning. It was Marchand's fifth penalty shot goal, third most in NHL history since they were introduced in 1934-35. He said the only thing I was really thinking was don't miss it. Worked out good. The hard part got by that pretty quick, and luckily that win went in. I think he was referring to, of course, and I kind of joked about this on Twitter, the – shootout attempt back before the world went off its uh, axis uh, where he missed the puck in Philadelphia. And uh, I'm sure, you know, it would have been pretty embarrassing to have that happen once again. Marchand matched uh, Charlie McAvoy with a team high five shots on goal. Uh, He ended the night by fighting through 
a uh, Miro Heiskanen back check to put home an empty netter. If you were watching on Nesson, you would have heard uh, Jack Edwards kind of lose his mind over that play, which was not that egregious uh, to most watching. And uh, Brad Marchand definitely uh, looked like an elite winger on the night, uh, if not the best winger in the NHL. Um, and, you know, penalty killing, power play, penalty shot, all situations, he's just so good. And Bruce Cassidy said that's fairly typical, right? Draws a penalty on the first goal. Uh, really smart play because it looks like things are going to be offside, but he didn't touch the puck, so he doesn't have it under control, so it's a tag up. He was thinking quick on his feet, gets himself in position for a penalty shot, and finishes the empty net goal all around a good game for Marshy in every area, and that was amazing to see. The other highlight for me was the performance of Jake DeBrusque. Uh, his third period goal proved to be the game winger winner as he put the Bruins ahead 2-1 at 443 of the final frame. Uh, he turned 25 on Sunday. He started the sequence with a strong forecheck, freed the puck up for Eric Halla, who found a trailing Nick Felino in the slot. Felino got the puck towards the net. DeBrusque uh, came in, whacked it by Holtby to put the Bruins on top. And it was amazing to see uh, Felino come in afterwards for uh, for the huge hockey hug uh, to celebrate. Uh, Cassidy said, of the third line, they will be hard to play against if they're attacking like that. It's good for the group. When Jake's in a good place, he's got personality, he's a good kid, and he's good for the locker room. That line did a good job simply playing behind their D, winning a foot races, creating second effort plays turnovers ends up on Jake's stick in the slot. And then of course, in the back of the net, uh, that's what they're trying to preach. You'll get rewarded a lot. If you're able to make those plays, uh, head coach, Bruce Cassidy, happy for Jake, a good start. He had a good preseason and they just have to continue how it started. Uh, DeBrusque was obviously very happy to score that goal. Selly season back in full effect. Uh, he said he thought preseason went fairly well, but it is just the preseason. You want to get the, on the board as fast as possible. And uh, seems like that mindset is working. Whatever is going on with the line and leaning on Nick and Eric, it's been very helpful for him. And I tabbed Nick Felino as an X factor for the Bruins this season, in large part because of the influence he can have over Jake DeBrusque as a veteran presence. Uh, Brad Marchand said he's been really happy the way Jake DeBrusque has played. He's a guy that feeds off confidence, and he has it right now. Uh, he's carried himself off the ice with much better energy about him and a lot more excitement this year. Again, very well detailed Jake's uh, mental struggles last season with COVID lockdown, being in quarantine, and uh, his physical struggles as well with the virus and, and other injuries. Marchand said he's a guy that they need to rely on if they're going to go far. He can be such a difference maker with his speed and his ability to put pucks in and around the net like you see tonight. And the third line, if they can be as effective as they were in the opening game, the Bruins are going to be that much more dangerous. We've always talked about secondary scoring. You know the first line is going to come through. Uh, the second line, you know they only had a couple games together. Uh, and I think they showed some pretty positive signs and they should get going pretty soon. And then if you have that third line going, that's, you know, that's what puts teams over the top is having their bottom six uh, be quite effective. Uh, before we get to uh, Jeremy Swayman's impact on the game, just want to talk for a quick second about uh, a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. Direct Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. The best part is there's no annual contract, so stop waiting and get your TV together with Direct Stream. Learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. And again, I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Ruins your first listen every day. It means a lot that uh, people are tuning in, the numbers are going up, and uh, I can feel the excitement from all of you 
about a new Boston Bruins season. We're free and available on all podcast platforms as well as on YouTube. Now, Jeremy Swayman became the first rookie goalie since Blaine Locker in 1995. That's a name uh, of blast from the past to start for Boston in a season opener. And the 22-year-old proved to be very well up to the task. Uh, he picked right up where he left off last season, uh, making 27 stops on 28 shots to pick up the victory. Uh, he joked, or sorry, I joked during the game that, uh, you know, next time I go see my therapist, I'm going to say I want the calmness of Jeremy Swayman. He just is, yeah, completely unflappable. It's, it's incredible for a 22-year-old, and he just looked so solid in net, um, and you don't worry at all as a viewer, an observer of the game, about him when he's in the net. It's, it's just crazy to think uh, of a young kid like that. Uh, Brad Marchand said he loves that kid. Such a good person in the room and off the ice. Fits in great. So genuine. And he's been very calm from the first day he's been here. He has a confidence about him in the net that he's going to play well and continue to impress. Very excited to see how his season is going to go. Great showing tonight. And he's been great all camp. Of course, Swayman got the call over uh, Linus Allmark, who was given a four-year, $20 million contract uh, this past offseason. A little shaky in the preseason. It will be a bit of a, a platoon in net. And I think it's you know just a matter of time before, before Allmark feels a bit more comfortable. I don't think it's really that much of a goalie controversy per se. If you saw after the game, Allmark came in, gave a huge hug to Swayman uh, after his performance. He even posted the hug on Instagram. And I don't personally like the idea of pitting goalies against each other. These guys are teammates. Uh, they know the situation, especially in today's NHL. There's no or very few goalies who are bona fide starters who play like 80% of the, I think of like Andre Vasilevsky, Connor Hellebuck, and that's pretty much it. Uh, these guys are teammates. They are a goalie tandem, not goalie, you know, um, competitors or just like stewing if they're not starting. Um, and so instead of looking at it as a goalie controversy, it's more of a goalie, you know, complementarianism kind of thing. They are uh, in it together. They both want to see the team win. And uh, yeah, they're both going to get pretty regular starts here uh, when it's all said and done. Going into it, Swayman said he just wanted to treat it like any other game, no bigger or smaller than what he's played before. Uh, after it now, he realizes the magnitude of it, and it's pretty special you know, just starting for the Bruins, home opener, season opener. He said it's something he'll never forget, and he thinks it's going to be a really uh, fun year. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, both um, Brad Marchand and Charlie McAvoy led with five shots on goal. Uh, David Pasternak, Mike Riley, and Brandon Carlo each had four shots. That was one of the big stories as well, is the amount of shots generated from the blue line. Uh, in the top five here, you had McAvoy, Riley, and Carlo, and then Grizzly had three of his own. Uh, so a lot of shots coming from the net. Clifton with two, sorry, from the back end. Derek Forbort in his Bruins debut, he only had uh, one shot, not really relied upon to, you know, get the puck on net per se. Only Eric Howla, Trent Frederick, and Carson Kuhlman uh, didn't have shots on net. I really do miss Curtis Lazar in there. You know, all due respect to Carson Kuhlman, he's just a guy that doesn't, for me, really tip the scales. Uh, he, you know, was shooting it from pretty far out, wasn't able to land a shot on net, and... Uh, I'd personally rather see Jack Stadnika up in the NHL lineup. It's not doesn't have to be a situation where it's fourth line in the NHL or first line in Providence. 
I think they could shift things around a little bit, maybe put Howa on the fourth line um, and put Stanika up on the, in the bottom six. Um, and yeah, I don't know the fourth line. Yeah. They had some energy, but uh, I still don't think that's the finished product. Hopefully Curtis Lazar can come back uh, sooner than later. Brad Marchand led the way with the two goals, two points. Uh, also had points from uh, Debraska, obviously, on the goal. Pasternak drew an assist. Felino and Howlett assisting on uh, Debrusque's Debrusk goal. And, uh, yeah, overall, a very encouraging start for the Bruins. Not perfect by any means. It's not going to be when you play, you know, your first game in 10 days. And uh, the Dallas Stars are a very good team. They can't be, uh, you know, seen as uh, – just a lesser team in the Western conference. These guys are um, coming into it with legit playoff aspirations. They went to the final a couple of years ago. They did lose to Ottawa on the second half of the back-to-back on Sunday. Uh, but uh, I do think they are going to be a pretty good team uh, down the stretch. Next up for the Boston Bruins is uh, a game in Philadelphia. And uh, yeah, they will be, taking on the Flyers. Not quite sure who the starter will be at this point. Um, I could see them going back to Swayman. I could also see them uh, starting Ulmark on Wednesday and then going with Swayman in uh, Buffalo on Friday so as to, yeah, just take away that uh, extra storyline in that one extra pressure for Allmark to have to go back and make his first start with his new team against his old team. Wednesday's game will be on TNT, uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, before then, we will uh, preview that game and give you any updates coming from Boston Bruins' uh, practice as they get ready for game number two, which is still a couple days away. Pretty crazy scheduling to begin the season, but uh, – Yep, we just uh, sit back patiently and wait for the Bruins to finally take to the ice. Did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's really something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their faves. There's coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. If you haven't tried all the flavors, You can get a mixed box where you will get two of each of the nine. If you do have a favorite, just load up on the one flavor. Uh, Now, some of them are nut-free and gluten-free, so be sure to look carefully at the label if you have a nut allergy or if you're like me and have a gluten allergy. Now, not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting, but they're also healthy too. There's about 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, 4 to 5 grams net carbs, all great tasting and all good for you as well. Built Bar uh, is available at Built.com and if you use promo code LOCKED15, you will get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Built Bar is the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. Thank you again for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Host Scott Cullen leans on his decades of fantasy insight and experience every day to help you be the expert of your fantasy hockey league. It is also free and available on all platforms. Now some sad news uh, this morning as uh, it was confirmed over the weekend that uh, Jimmy Hayes passed away on August 23rd with fentanyl and cocaine in his system. Uh, His family, you know, his father, his brother, his wife, Kristen, uh, they spoke with the Boston Globe over the weekend uh, in order to uh, help other people uh, who may be suffering or going through the same kind of things as uh, Jimmy Hayes. This is from Dan Shaughnessy of the Boston Globe. Uh, It's news some feared when the wildly popular pillar of the community died after celebrating his son's second birthday with his wife, Kristen, and infant son. On a perfect 
Sunday, seven weeks ago. His death made no sense in the moment. The six foot five, 31 year old ex athlete presented as healthy, happy, blossoming into a full life of parenting, podcasting, and doing good deeds for others. He had a beautiful wife, two adorable boys. His parents, sisters, brothers, and cousins were all around him. Nobody saw it coming. And uh, his wife, Kristen, said she was completely shocked, so certain that it had nothing to do with drugs, really thought it was a heart attack or anything that wasn't related to drugs. Didn't make any sense, so it was hard. Was hoping to get a different phone call when they called, hoping to get some clarity, and was shocked to hear that it was that. Never showed any signs of struggle at home. Um, his father, uh, Kevin Sr., was not as surprised as everyone else. He said, I'm an addict myself, sober a long, long time, but I know how powerful that stuff is. Uh, he was in shock when it happened, but then he started putting stuff together in his head. He knows what addiction does. After, about maybe 16 or 17 months ago, he said he saw a little change in Jimmy's behavior and he went to him and said, I think there might be a problem here with pills. He had an injury for a while and he started taking the painkillers and they just get to you. Uh, his dad said, Jim, I think I see a problem here. He told him to get help. And he said, when I you want help, I'll be here for you. Let me know. He called three weeks later and said, dad, I'm hooked on these pills, got injured and I started taking them and never got off. Uh, he went to a place up in Haverfill, Haverhill, gets help. Everything was on the path to recovery, but that shit is so powerful. And uh, it got to him, uh, so which is very sad, uh, of course. Um, and here at Locked On Boston Bruins, I extend my sympathies, my thoughts and prayers to uh, Kristen, to uh, the Hayes family, and uh, just – Hope, yeah, that this story does uh, encourage others to seek help uh, before it's too late if they are in a similar uh, situation. So uh, sad, heartbreaking, and uh, yeah, I just I can't stop thinking about Jimmy and, and Kristen and their two boys and just hope that uh, they're going to be okay for sure, that they know that they are loved and that, uh, yeah. We're all we're all here for them. Uh, in uh, other news, uh, Austin Matthews is going to make his season debut tonight against the New York Rangers. Uh, he underwent wrist surgery two months ago. Uh, Brady Kachuk will make his season debut on Thursday against the San Jose Sharks after having recently signed uh, his deal as a restricted free agent. Uh, Nathan McKinnon remains sidelined with COVID uh, positive tests. Uh, he's asymptomatic, but uh, won't travel with the team for their upcoming Eastern road trip, uh, which is really, uh, really too bad. And uh, what else is going on out there? A couple rumors that caught my eye. Uh, Phil Kessel, no secret that he wants to be traded, according to Craig Morgan of gophxn.com. Uh, they are working feverishly to grant his wish, apparently. He missed all of the preseason uh, with uh, various injuries on his foot, and, but he is generally a pretty dependable player. Uh, most teams, of course, can't afford to take on the $6.8 million of his $8 million salary cap hit that the Coyotes are carrying. If they're willing to retain uh, then uh, that would make a deal much more palatable. It would be really cool to see him back in black and gold, but I doubt uh, the Bruins will be able to swing that. Another guy that I talked about last week, Dylan Strom, uh, Mark Lazarus of The Athletic, doesn't believe he'll be with the Blackhawks for much longer. Uh, he's their 14th forward. Uh, they can't send him to the minors because they know he won't clear waivers. Can't seem to crack the lineup behind Jonathan Taves, Tyler Johnson, Kirby Dak. And uh, he doesn't really have the defensive game to put him in the bottom six. Uh, they've been listening to trade offers for the, what was he picked? Third overall uh, pick from 2015. And uh, yeah, it's a guy that I could see the Bruins being in on. He's only making $3 million. Uh, He could be 
you know, a guy that they could put in the, in the, the top six or the third line center role. Uh, but I think they're pretty uh, set with the guys that they have in there at the moment. Anyways, that's it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Thank you so much for, for listening. I hope you're all having a great start to your new week. Uh, again, no Bruins hockey until Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back to kick off the uh, Atlantic Division Power Rankings. And uh, I'll probably also talk a little bit about Succession, which I'm very excited to watch today uh, or tonight. I didn't get a chance to watch last night. So, yeah, please do hit that subscribe button on YouTube or on your podcast app if you haven't already. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care, friends.